Hi, I'm Vibrine Samuels and welcome back to another episode of Soulstone Astrology where I give you my texture take on the world of astrology. Well, at the end of this week, on the 1st of October, we have a new moon that's forming in Libra in the cardinal air sign of Libra. So we have the sun representing the ego, the moon representing emotions, flowing harmoniously together. So over the next month, it's a great time for you to really be um, harnessing the energies coming from this new moon. It's a time of ease, but at the same time, it's a time of action because Libra is a cardinal sign. So we've had Mercury come out of its retrograde phase. So anything that you've been thinking about that you want to manifest in the world, now that we have the new moon in Libra, you should be able to do it with the cooperation of others. This has been mirrored again because we've got the Sun forming a conjunction with Jupiter in Libra again. So here Jupiter is expanding the confidence and the air of ease that the Sun is emitting. And it's a time whereby through your relationships, if you're bringing on board the views of other people, you can then go ahead to achieve your goals. But at the same time, try not to overpromise and under deliver. That theme is mirrored again because we have Mars squaring Jupiter in Libra. And here we've got Mars in Capricorn, so it's a very industrious, a very productive time. Mars is about rolling up your sleeves, time to get to work and to get busy and to get things done. It's in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. So here you want to be establishing your sense of authority, your sense of present, your presence, your sense of power in the world through what you have cultivated. Here again, Jupiter impacts upon Mars. So you could be somebody that's got lots of fingers in different pies. And if you're not discerning, you're unable to deliver on them. So you could be over promising and under delivering. But with Saturn, Saturn is about get a plan in action, be focused. It's time for concentrated effort. And so therefore you may have all of these different projects, but it's how you then prioritize them in a sequential way. We have Venus. Now Venus has two lovely aspects, one with Pluto, i.e. it's a, a sextile with Pluto, and a trine with Neptune. So now could be the time where you have idealized love coming into your world. It could be the ideal person that you've been dreaming of because it's in Neptune. And through this relationship, you could have a spiritual awakening. So it could be a very spiritualized time that you're having with this particular relationship. So there's so much harmony, there's so much love. It's like hearts flowing in simpatico because you're so connected, you get each other. Then we have the sextile that's going on with Pluto. So here again, this particular relationship could be deeply transformative in a way that you, you can no longer go back to once, what you once were. So it's going to touch in a very profound way. Now with Pluto here, Pluto will be cutting away of any, um, any uh, emotions that are, are buried, that no longer serve you, that could get in the way of this beautiful, harmonious relationship that is coming towards you. It also, because we've got Pluto here, although it's a sextile, still be mindful that you're not being overwhelmed by passion and great sex and great heart connections and, and deep connecting emotions because here we're dealing with Venus and it's about being led through your values. So value yourself, value the relationship and everything that it wants to bring to you. So it's a, it's a great energy, great energy if you're paying attention. So we've got this Saturn. Now Saturn is between the North Node and the South Node and as I mentioned it's about how you could actually be trapped in past glories um, and if you're trapped in past glories that then means that you're thwarting your ambition in some way. So this Mars square Jupiter that wants to really move forward and crack on with it wants to be in the present in, or in order to build something for the future but if you're living 
Saturn square the south node, you are basking in past glories and that moment has gone. Now is the time for you to step into the present and move forward into the new direction that Saturn square the north node is calling you towards. We also have Mercury and Mercury is being challenged uh, with the opposition to Chiron, with Quincunx in, uh, with uh, Uranus and the Trine with Pluto. So with Mercury and uh, Chiron, here it could be a wounding over words. Somebody has wounded you with their words. Um, you have felt undermined through or, or humiliated or uncomfortable because somebody has felt your communication style isn't at its best, whatever that's meant to mean, but you've taken it to heart. But now is the time for you to confidently and assertively speak your mind. You know, we've got Mercury, it's in the sign that it rules. It's in a powerful position, it's in Earth, so it's very grounded. So it's about being confident in the things that you want to say. And it's a time for you to heal that wound. You're no longer that person because that's the past. Mercury now is moving direct, so we're in the present, moving towards the future. With the Queen Conks, there's this idea that you've got Mercury this side, you've got Uranus this side, and it's a Queen Conks, so they're not quite connecting with each other. And yet, Uranus wants to intercept Mercury by uh, being provocative, by uh, being challenging. It's an invitation for you to be innovative or inventive or creative in your thought process. It could be about the way that you change your approach to things. It could be about really speaking the truth. It could be about being very provocative through your use of words. It's where you no longer choose to be hypocritical. It's where you no longer choose to sweep things under the carpet. Here it's about really grappling, not so much grappling actually, it's about speaking the truth. I mentioned it in the last episode, it's the theme, it's the time for truth telling, not based on gossip, not based on, you know, some kind of fantasy over what you want a particular communication or conversation to have or, or to recreate a version of events. It's about what's real. And with Uranus here, Uranus and it's in Aries. So here we have this cardinality coming back into your world. It wants you to stand up. It wants you to be assertive. And it wants you to use your unique style of communication because through doing so, you could liberate yourself but also liberate other people. We also have Mercury and Mercury is trining Pluto. Here we have power. So we have the power of words because Mercury is in Virgo, one of the signs it rules. And then we have Pluto, which is a manifestation of power. And the way that this shows up this week is tonight, we have the first presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And this is a great manifestation. Mercury Pluto is a great manifestation of what both of these candidates are doing. They're using the power of communication through voice, Mercury, and they're using their power as the two powerful candidates who are going for the most powerful position in the world to be the President of the United States. So great image, great symbol. Now, what they're seeking to do in their own individual way is who is going to connect in the most profound way with the, 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 the mind of the collective, the electorate, the citizens in America? That's going to be one test for them. Who is going to connect in that profound way that the group mind buys into the narrative? Also, what each candidate is doing is that they're using the kind of social interactions through this whole presidential um, election process and they're using it to build on or aid their own ambition and self-expression. So here again we have Mercury being represented through self-expression, could be uniquely, and then we have Pluto represented the power, how they're powerfully able to use the narrative and build upon the collective narrative, the collective interactions. 
So it's going to be quite interesting to see how this pans out and it's about how they manifest their ambitions, their dreams and their goals. And it reminds me of this Tanzanian myth of the two brothers. So we have Kanari and Kanyanga. And they're two brothers who lived um, in a poor neighborhood, come from a poor family, and they were on a quest to discover their vocation, their purpose in life. So they set off, no, first of all, uh, the elder brother, Kanari, he set off to Kilimanjaro to see whether he could find something to help build up his community. On his journey, he met a woman who was sitting on the roadside. She had very sore eyes and he approached her and he said, oh, where does the king live? And she said, lick my eyes and I will tell you. He was repulsed by this, completely ignored her and continued on his journey. He then came across a group of little people. He approached them and said, oh, let me know when your fathers and brothers arrive uh, because I want to speak to them. So they said to him, OK, wait over there, they'll soon be here. He waited all day and all night. Uh, the little people, they ate, they didn't give him any food, they completely ignored him. It then dawned on, on him that, you know, the fathers and the brothers were not going to come. So during the night, he set off again back to his village, back to his community. But he got lost along the way and he was lost for about a month. He then turns up and says, oh, he was bad mouthing, what happened? So his brother, Kanyanga, thought, OK, I'm going to give it a go. So off he went, he met the very same woman, she posed the, the uh, request to him, he licked her eyes, whether he was repulsed or not, he didn't show it, he licked her eyes, and she said, go in this particular direction, on your way you'll meet a group of little people, treat them respectfully and you will get to the king. So said, so done. Off he goes and he meets the little people, he interacts beautifully with them, they take him to the king. The king can see that he's really hungry, really tired. He feeds him, allows him to sleep. And the next morning, full of gratitude, he then uh, turns to the little people and he shares all of his knowledge, his incantations, his um, quotes, his medicines in terms of how the little people can use all of this to cultivate the land. They were so grateful that each of them gave him a cow or a goat and so therefore uh, Kanyanga set off back to his village with a full herd and so the lesson here for all of us be it the presidential uh, candidates or us in our individual lives is how do we show compassion open-heartedness and generosity to everybody that we meet and that we're not treating people who we think look different from us behave differently from us, treating them in a way whereby we disregard them because they could be the very same people that you need to help you achieve your goals. So for me, it's going to be very interesting to see how this debate pans out and who really taps into the mind of the collective. So it brings me to the question of the day and the question of the day is how are you able to live a heart-centered, a heart-driven life? And the quote of the day comes from Goethe. And what he said is, all the knowledge I have can be acquired by anyone, but my heart is always my own. And so therefore, how will you treasure your heart? And how, through treasuring your heart, through valuing your heart, are you then able to step into the world with a heart-centered approach. As always, put your comments and questions in the comment box below. I have to apologize because I've tried to connect back with, I've, I've done the majority of you, but there's been a couple of people I've been unable to post my comment to because every time I post or try to post my comment back, YouTube says comment can't be posted. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. As always, it's an open-hearted, loving comment. Um, so if anyone knows, Put it in the comment box below but i've seen there's a couple of comments that i will obviously try and get back to um so if you've got any other questions feel free let's get into a dialogue around this you know i love to connect with you also feel free to like share and subscribe to my channel share this episode with other people in your network and have a heartfelt heart driven week until i see you again 
on the next episode.